Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's National Football Foundation and College Football Hall of Fame Scholar Athlete Luncheon. I'm Ed Daniels from WGNO TV, and it gives me great pleasure to be here to recognize true excellence today, on and off the field. Before we get into our program, let's pause for an invocation. Always good to pray, and Dr. Benny Jones will lead us. Thank you. I will not keep you long. Number one is, the last man once said for you young people, the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why you're here. And I pray as adults here, hope that you guys figure out why you're here. Okay? Let's pray. This is a prayer from 1 Chronicles 29 from King David. He said, Blessed are you, Lord God, our Father, forever and ever. Your Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and you reign over all. And in your hand is power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank you. Father, we thank you this day for these students who are here. Father, who have proven themselves in this world so far. Father, they've done great things on the football field, on the academic fields. And Father, we just pray that you might continue to be with them, guide them, give them strength, and help them to be productive citizens in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ben. The National Football Foundation, founded in 1947, has 120 chapters in 47 states, with over 100,000 volunteers. New Orleans chapter, established in 1967, been recognizing the excellence in high school football since that time. In 2000, the Allstate Sugar Bowl took over the sponsorship of the local chapter. People know the Sugar Bowl for the great game played every winter at the Superdome. However, the, Super, the Sugar Bowl is far more than just a football game, supporting numerous community events throughout the year, including this one. So, I'd like to introduce Walter Becker, the president of the Sugar Bowl Committee, to give us a little more information about the organization and its support of young student athletes in this city. Walter grew up in New Orleans, graduated from St. Martin's Episcopal High School, undergraduate and law degrees from Tulane University. Mr. Becker. Well, thank you, Ed. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start by congratulating all the scholar-athletes here in the room and in attendance today for their hard work in the classroom, in the community, and on the football field. Well, now, as Ed mentioned, people around the world recognize the Sugar Bowl as one of the premier college football events every year. However, the Sugar Bowl Committee is also very proud to play a major role in supporting high school sports fabric of this city and of our state. The Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, sponsors events like today's luncheon, but we also host and sustain a large number of games, tournaments, meets, and championships in a wide range of sports. We're also very proud of our support for education in this region. For several years now, the Bowl has worked closely with the College Football Playoff Foundation to ensure that millions of dollars have gone towards an initiative aimed at backing teaching programs in the New Orleans area. The Sugar Bowl also provides annual scholarship assistance to deserving young men and women from our city. You're going to hear Matt more today about those, scholars, about those scholarships later in today's program. That's one of the main reasons we're here. Now, from the beginning, the Sugar Bowl has been committed to the youth of this area. And today's luncheon is a perfect example of that. Today, we're recognizing some of the best of the best. So to all of you here today, thank you for your continued support of what the Sugar Bowl is doing in New Orleans and beyond. And I'll turn it back over to Ed. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Since taking over sponsorship of the local chapter of the NFF, the Sugar Bowl has recognized 
over 700 outstanding scholar athletes while distributing over $700,000 in scholarship money. That's just one chapter of this great national organization. To speak a little more on the history of the NFF, let's bring up Michael Kristovich, the chairman of the All-State Sugar Bowl chapter of the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame. Thank you, Ed. Um, we're here to honor all of the great accolades and accomplishments of all these high school players and what they've done on the field and what they've done in the classroom. But I would be remiss in not giving credit to the coaches, administrators, and mostly their parents for seeing them to this point of excellence that we are honoring today. The National Football Foundation is 77 years old. The Sugar Bowl chapter, our sponsorship, is 25 years old this year. The person who brought the Sugar Bowl as a sponsor for the NFF was Elliot Laudeman. He passed away two weeks ago, and I have to tell you, it was a great loss, but everything Elliot did was with class, and this accomplishment where we are sitting today honoring the best student athletes is a credit to Elliot also. You're about to see a film about the National Football Foundation, the history, all that it has done. The most important thing I would like you to pay attention to are some of our scholarship winners from years ago and what they have done with their lives since being honored in this room. It's the same thing we'll be able to show in years for many of you who have accomplished so much and have so much more to accomplish. So with that, please watch the film and recognize the greatness of each of you. Thank you. When I think about all the things about football that I appreciate more than gold or silver, football by any measure has enriched my life. I can hear the band and feel the rhythm of cheerleader chants and Gatorade victory bands. The spectacle of football on a beautiful Saturday afternoon brings people together. It builds community and it is the source of the dreams of millions of young children on the playgrounds of America. We all started out uh, in our small towns with many kids who were as good or better than all of us, and we were the lucky ones. And when you see the young men on the football field having been given that opportunity to do great things, you know that football is doing its part. Intercollegiate football is much more than a game. Football not only teaches a man, it helps make the man. A heartfelt thanks to the National Football Foundation for leading our sport over an astounding seven decades. During those years, the NFF never once buckled under the weight of preserving and enriching the game of football. Organizations such as this with all of the prestige and influence which you bring to help establish more programs for participation by American boys and girls, young and old. The National Football Foundation embodies people that care about the, the integrity of the game. We owe the generations that follow us, our student athletes, to be proud of their academic achievement. This year, we've got a final, our very own Thomas Booker! Henny yeah. is a finalist for the smartest man in college football. Let's give a round of applause for Henny! Yeah. Let's go! Heck yeah, baby! Let's go! We're going to New York! <laughs> One of my dreams was to play college football and to be selected as a scholar athlete tonight.
I'm honored to be joining the incredible people who have previously received this award and I'll do my best to uphold the legacy of, of everyone who's won it before me. The game, it always shows up in the fall when the days grow shorter and the rains come and our spirits be lifted. We said all along <laughs> we can beat anybody if we don't beat ourselves. And our guys got a lot of heart. We share intangibles that made a difference. A burning desire to succeed, to achieve, to get the job done. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to accept the MacArthur Bowl and go to the Championship. Courage, stamina, coordinated efficiency. We're going to take you tonight. Come on. We're putting you on the line. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. We're the ones that can look back on our college football as measure of more than yards gained, but measure of our private selves. Because in the end, Hall of Fame's not about glory, it's about dreams. How about a hand, ladies and gentlemen, for the national? A couple of things before we, we move on. I'd like to thank everyone affiliated with the Sugar Bowl here today. You have done an incredible job for our community. They've sponsored our high school football show for over 30 years. They sponsor Ken's radio show. They're also the title sponsor for the All-State Sugar Bowl National Prep Classic, which had 60 teams this year. We filled over 800 hotel rooms in Jefferson Parish, and all of that would not be possible without the All-State Sugar Bowl. So to Jeff Hunley and the entire staff at the Sugar Bowl and all the Sugar Bowl committee members here today, would you please stand and take a bow. Without you, without you, it is not possible. And also, I think I speak for Pete and Ron and Bill and Lenny and Kenny and all the media members who are here today. Thanks to all of our high school football coaches. Without you, we don't have a chance. And you guys and ladies have been phenomenal to us over the years. So if you would please stand and take a bow, I would appreciate it. So without you, it is not possible. And again, our thanks to all our high school coaches who have been so great to us over the years and to the All-State Sugar Bowl for being a tremendous servant of our community. While the focus of today's luncheon is the outstanding scholar-athletes, we're also taking time to recognize two individuals who have been key contributors to the New Orleans community. The first honor we're presenting today is the contributions to Amateur Football Award, which is given annually to an individual for his or her effort to promote the game, preserve its history, and more importantly, ensure its future. I'd like to introduce now Peter Finney, the Editor-in-Chief of the Clarion Herald newspaper, who will tell us a little bit about this year's honor. Peter. Thank you, Ed, very much. Uh, Ron Ricardo is one of my favorite persons in the world. And, uh, they always say a sports writer can really be a writer. Uh, and it, my, my dad, uh, to tell you one story about my dad, in 1975, there was a plane crash. Uh, plane left New Orleans to JFK. My dad was on the Delta flight. 30 minutes later, an Eastern flight left and crashed at JFK. My dad was at the airport and actually had to cover it for the next two days. And he said, we, we thought you wrote sports. And he said, well, no. If you're a sports writer, you can write anything. And that reminds me of Ron, uh, Ron Bricado. He's a, a superb, not only a columnist, but a, but a writer. I'll never forget, after Hurricane Katrina uh, in 2005, Ron did a story on a priest who, on the Red Jadon, he stayed at his church. Uh, at St. Nicholas of Myra on Lake Catholic 
and uh, people couldn't, they thought he had evacuated his family, thought he had evacuated his body, was never found, he was washed out of the city, and presumed dead. Ron did a fantastic story on that. But when Ron came to the Clarion in 1997, he did sports, but he also did uh, stories. And, uh, but his, his life as a sports writer has been just amazing for me. As an editor, it's so nice to not have to worry about anything uh, because you know it's going to be covered and covered great. Ron's a fantastic individual. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. He's got a great sense of humor. He brought, brings a lot of joy to our lives. He's a very he's an iconoclastic Catholic, he would say. He, he would call uh, St. Louis King of France, St. Louis King of Bucktown. So uh, that's one of his many, 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 many uh, treats. But uh, I'm really proud of Ron and, and his, uh, his work uh, at the Clarion Herald and really for his lifetime in journalism. So it's a very richly uh, deserved honor. Congratulations, Ron. celebrate our 50th anniversary in October. <laughs> That's right on a Friday in football season. <laughs> She's used to that. My sister and brother-in-law is Debbie and Gary Wilson. They both retired and now tour the country in their camper. Of course, you met Peter, one of the uh, most interesting and, and highest people I've ever met. And not a bad guy to work for. Uh, Bill Baumgartner, I don't know how many of you know Bill. Bill started the state's item in 1973 with me. We covered prep together. We've been on a road together covering games, meetings, conventions, and most often we stayed together at the same hotel in the same room. Uh, so much so that uh, our peers accuse us of sharing the same brain. <laughs> Um, Key France, whose who's wonderful family founded and ran Kehoe France School, fine elementary school for many years. And Jay Roth, um, football coach and now athletic director at Archbishop Rommel. 23 years in the business, 228 victories, for which on Tuesday of next week, he will be inducted in the Louisiana High School Hall of Fame. It's well deserved, and it's the highest honor the LHSAA can give one of its own. Thank you. You know, people ask me often, do, when are you going to retire? Uh, I tell them like, one of three things that will happen. God will tell me it's time. Peter Finney Jr. will tell me it's time. <laughs> oh, and Powerball. <laughs> But when I look, think about these 32 young men who are here tonight, today, to uh, be honored for their work, on, not only on the football field, but for outside the hash marks in the classroom and the community, um, it makes me proud that uh, the job I'm doing. The, uh, their legacy of a long line of young men like themselves, football players who have gone beyond the football field to help at schools and make their families in school, the coaches proud. Uh, five come to mind that I've covered and got to know over the years. Miles Clemens, Chuck LaPere from Newman, Jack LaBoard from Jesuit, Richard Breedy, Rod West, Brother Martin. <clears throat> All not only outstanding football players, but great business leaders and civic leaders. And they all have one thing in common besides being football players. They all rose to the ranks of president of the Sugar Bowl Committee. And of course, all these great teams in New Orleans. Uh, 
These guys I've, I've been proud to know for years, and uh, maybe one day one of you will rise to that occasion. Uh, but in the meantime, let's, today is your day. Enjoy it to the fullest. You've earned it, and I thank you for this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next award goes to the Distinguished American, who will be introduced by Jeff Hundley, the Chief Executive Officer of the Allstate Sugar Bowl. This award presented each year to an individual who has set the standard for a life of service to the community and has made a significant contribution to the betterment of amateur football. Jeff, it's all yours. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be with you, Ed. Appreciate what you do for high school sports and have done for a long time around here. Ken Trahan's here, too, Ken. Between the two of you all, you've really lifted this, the sport and, and promoted it properly, and we're, we're proud to be associated with it all. Very much so. I want to start and congratulate Ron. Uh, uh, Well-earned award, Ron. It's been great to see you. I've been here 30 years, and you've been at every event, every every time I've been at something. So, uh, a lot of miles on, on, on your uh, career, but appreciate all you do. And to the young men, the scholar athletes who are being recognized here today, congratulations. Uh, you've done well to be here, and you're to be commended for your commitment to excellence as a group. Uh, some of you here know Bill Hancock, uh, who's going to be the recipient of our Distinguished American Award. But if you didn't know him, and we're meeting him for the first time, he might introduce himself as, as just a, a small town newspaper guy. Uh, even with all his accomplishments and successes over the years, uh, Bill loves to share stories about himself as a young boy running around the, the Hobart Democrat Chief uh, newspaper in Oklahoma, where his dad was the, the owner and, and publisher of the paper. Or maybe if you're meeting Bill for the first time, he'd tell you about one of the 15 marathons that he's run. Or furthermore, he, he might tell you about the, riding his bicycle across the country, which he's done twice, by the way. Uh, he's a slow learner, I think. <laughs> uh, but, uh, or maybe he would, he'd tell you stories uh, about his adventures serving on the U.S. Olympic Committee, or he's worked uh, 15 different Olympic Games. Bill's also an accomplished author and uh, has, has uh, one good book and I'm sure he's got another one in him uh, one of these days soon after he's retiring. But hold on, you know, if, you, if I think about it more, what Bill would probably really do if he just met him, he'd probably take the opportunity to brag about his family. His son and, and his three grandchildren who, who he's so proud of. Uh, but the Hancock family starts uh, with his amazing wife, Nikki, who's right here with us by his side here today, uh, just as she has been since their high school days. Bill and Nikki were high school sweethearts, have been married for almost 56 years now, and you won't find a happier, more loving, more well-respected, well-liked couple in this industry than Bill and Nikki Hancock. With all he's accomplished, Bill's never forgotten where he came from. He has a firm grasp on what's important in life. Uh, there have been so many high-level meetings that I've had the good fortune to be involved in with Bill, where he's reminded us how cool it is that we get to work in an industry like this. Uh, he's also reminded us, uh, he calls it that we're working in the toy department of life, and that we need to stop and smell the roses along the way as we go forward. Uh, I know that, that knowing Bill, he's going to really enjoy hearing about the successes of the young men here today, uh, all of their accomplishments. Sure, he's going to be impressed by what you've done on the football field, but it's going to be the out of the spotlight success in the classroom and in the community that's really going to probably resonate most with Bill knowing him. That's because Bill, in my opinion, is, is the walking definition of confident humility. Uh, he was the first ever director of the NCAA Men's Final Four, did that for 13 years. For seven years after that, he was the head of the Bowl Championship Series, 
and most recently he moved into position as executive director of the college football playoff. Uh, actually, in that role, Bill's had to come into the spotlight uh, because of the great success of that event over the years. Uh, Bill and his staff have built the national championship <coughs> tournament into truly an amazing event. Uh, today it stands as, as one of the greatest annual sporting events in, in, in the country and stands second only to the NFL on an annual basis in terms of the number of viewers uh, that it draws. It's ahead of the NBA Finals, ahead of the World Series, uh, again, second only to the Super Bowl. So for the past 20 years or so, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with Bill on college, uh, in the college football world and can say, you know, most sincerely that it's really been an honor and a privilege, Bill, to, to get to work with you. Uh, during that time. Ed already told you uh, what this, this award is, but I want to say it again. The Distinguished American Award is presented each year to an individual who set the standard for a lifetime of service to the community and has made a significant contribution to the betterment of amateur football. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Bill Hancock. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this means a lot to me because I love this city. I have loved it for a long time. I love the spirit here. I love the people here. I love everything about New Orleans. And to get to come here and receive something like this is, uh, is pretty overwhelming. Uh, <clears throat> I <laughs> when I was a kid, all I wanted to do was grow up and be Ron. <laughs> Did he leave? He's right there. He probably went off the covers. All I wanted to do was be you. But now I've realized that really what I should have wanted to do was become Peter. <laughs> but, I, uh, in, in high school, I was uh, I played only one thing, uh, tenor sax. <laughs> I was darn good at it. Uh, but I got to have a lot, receive a lot of books. I, I love books, and one of the books I got had a photo of a Sugar Bowl game in about 1950, and I'll never forget the players were standing beside an ice sculpture, an ice carving, and it was magic. And I thought, my goodness, can I ever be involved in something like that where I could actually go and maybe touch that ice carving? It was the tradition, the magic of the Sugar Bowl, and it impressed me so much. And fast forwarding a little bit, I was one of those people, I wonder how many in this room did the same thing, I'm going to find out. How many in the room got to see two Sugar Bowl games in the same year? There's a whole, there's a bunch of us, right? Now you're showing your age out there, some of you. But I believe that was in uh, January 1 of 1972 and December 31 of 73, I believe. I worked at the University of Oklahoma. We played in both those games. Uh, we defeated uh, Auburn one year and Penn State the next year. But that was in the old stadium, which was another magical place, a uh, magical spot in your city. Uh, I was able to be, become director of the Final Four. I don't know why in the world they ever hired me for that, but don't tell them. Uh, loved my time there, loved working in New Orleans, loved the Final Fours that we got to put on here. Uh, and then down the road, they asked me if I'd want to become director of the college football playoff. My goodness, what an opportunity for an old newspaper guy like me. Um, we, I was the only employee when the college football playoff started. We didn't have anything. We had no staff, no trophy, no nothing. And we didn't even have a name. And, we, and they, did, they said, we hired a company in New York to help us try to pick out the name. And so we came up with the name of the event and they trotted me out at a news conference in Pasadena. And so I'm up on the stage and I said, ladies and gentlemen, the name of the new event is going to be College Football Playoff. 
<laughs> and a reporter in San Antonio tweeted instantly, if Bill Hancock had a dog, its name would be Dog. <laughs> 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 no, we've had a lot of great adventures. Um, just a terrific event. As Jeff said, it's second only to Super Bowl in terms of viewership. Um, I wish we could get a Caitlin Clark to join our group. My goodness, how about Caitlin Clark? How about the magic of Caitlin Clark? So cool. Just an Iowa high school kid that wound up having the kind of career that she had. Uh, remarkable. Um, we, we are... We don't want to be Super Bowl. We're just not. We don't need to be. We have the, we have the pageantry of college football. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about the group here. I'm, I'm assuming LSU, most of you are LSU people. Do we have any Tulane in, in, the, in the house? A lot of Tulane in the house. Excellent. Any other schools? Anybody want to just kind of shout out your school? Did you like? Loyola. Loyola? <laughs> well, I know there's people from all around the country. Um, to the high school players here today, awesome. I want to shake your, each of your hands and hug you and tell you how proud you should be of what you've accomplished, but also say there's a lot ahead of you, and you don't even know what's ahead. I mean, honest to gosh, when I, when I was in high school, I wanted to be a classical piano player. And then later I wanted to grow, grow up and be Pete Finney. And then my path just kept changing and all of a sudden, here I am sitting at my end of the career, end of my career as the director of the college football playoff. You will not know, you athletes, you will not know what's ahead of you, but just work hard, be prepared, keep smiling, make a lot of friends, and, and success is waiting for you. Um, parents, I see some people I don't have to be parents. Man, you have to be proud. Goodness gracious. Um, soak it all in. Don't miss anything. Uh, have, you had, have you had graduation yet? Probably not. No. You'll cry at graduation. <laughs> Twice. That's okay. Students, don't be embarrassed when your mom and dad cry. It's fine. <laughs> but just know what great things are ahead for you. Um, and someday maybe you'll grow up and be a part of the Sugar Bowl. Uh, the Sugar Bowl is, is a remarkable part of the college football enterprise and has been for so long. And thanks to Jeff and, and the committee members who are here and, and have, that, that you are following. Uh, you've just done great things with, with, with the Sugar Bowl and you will continue. Uh, in closing, I just want to thank all of you again for this neat award. I'm sorry I didn't get to grow up and become Peter, but I did my best. So, thanks everybody. Take care. But any person who is a friend of New Orleans and a friend of the All-State Sugar Bowl is a friend of ours. Thank you, Bill. We appreciate you very much. Now we're going to uh, present our scholar-athletes. And the gentleman here to do that today is my good buddy, Ken Tran. We've been friends since we were sophomores at Homo High School. Like he, I follow the greatest franchise in the history of sports, the St. Louis Cardinals, and so does he. And we have a lifetime connection there on many fronts. One quick note about Ken, he can talk quickly, so we're not going to be here very long. And he can talk a lot. One night I was doing Buddy Deliberto's radio show. Buddy used to take off for vacation in June. And he would take off for several weeks, and I would do his radio show. And Ken was doing the Zephyrs at the time. And I asked Ken a question about the Zephyrs, and I got out of my chair. I went to the restroom. I went and got a Diet Coke, and I sat back down, and he was still answering the question. <laughs> so I knew I was in good shape. I knew there wasn't going to be any dead air with Ken. But Ken is awesome at his job, and he's going to do a great job for us today presenting our outstanding scholar athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Mr. Ken Train. It's all true. Thanks, Ed. And once again, congratulations to Bill. Been a tremendous admirer for many years of what he's done and, and the things that matter in life most, your faith, in my case, that's true of him too. Family, friends, 
and they all say Sugar Bowl <laughs> and high school sports because truly that's our passion. Ed and I have been championing this cause for quite a few years now, and I've been very blessed to be on the committee, the media selection committee since 1980, so don't do the math, please. But that has been one of the true distinctive honors of my life to be part of it because this organization is second to none. And what the Allstate Sugar Bowl does, not just for us in sponsoring Ed's television show, our radio shows, our website at CrescentCitySports.com, but what they do on the statewide level for amateur sports is unprecedented. Just check it out. Uh, they have sponsored virtually everything. Congratulations, I mentioned Ron and Bill. Uh, Ron, Bill Bumgarner, these guys are trailblazers. They're tremendous journalists and wonderful men who we've emulated. The same is true of Will Pennington, who's sitting here today, who actually taught me. So don't guess his age, whatever you do. Uh, Pete Finney, likewise, his dad, special on our committee for the Saints Hall of Fame, which I run, among other entities. And you talk about wonderful people and some of the other names that have been mentioned here today certainly are applicable. Also, I want to echo the thoughts expressed earlier for Jay Roth. Jay's going into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame April 16th. I'll be blessed to be there watching that among the other honorees. It's richly deserved. Nobody wants less attention than Jay does, but we're giving it to him anyway. So congratulations to him. I want to remind everyone the video today will have it all up at CrescentCitySports.com so if your parents, families will be able to check it out when you're finished and for eternity at CrescentCitySports.com as we do with all sports. And you can watch it back and check in the cause and it's free. So there's nothing to worry about with Chargers there. As Ed spoke about in covering high school football in this area for many years, well, I'm trying to do the math. I did my first game in 1978, so once again, don't add it up. It's an honor to be here today. Be able to put a spotlight on these young men and their accomplishments, excelling on the field, in the classroom, and of course in the community as well, as you'll hear with some of their buyers. Since the Sugar Bowl began sponsoring this event, it's honored 680 talented young football players and scholars from 71 different high schools. Along with the recognition, the Sugar Bowl has provided over $700,000 in scholarship to help the collegiate aspirations of some of the best and the brightest, whom you will meet here shortly. Now these honors are far more than just the individual players. They're also a credit to the coaches who were recognized here earlier, and we value them greatly. The family members who are here today, and we value them greatly. And the entire support systems that these young men have to help them reach this level. The Sugar Bowl wants to thank everyone, all the people, who have supported these young men throughout their lives. They wouldn't be here otherwise. But it's also important to mention community leaders like the Allstate Sugar Bowl and the National Football Foundation, which makes this possible. And we're here today to give much deserved praise to these young men because of the efforts of both of these outstanding organizations. Having said all that, congratulations to the 32 young men we're honoring today as they took advantage of their opportunities and put forth the effort needed to excel. Congratulations, and please give up the good work. Give them a round of applause if you will. Honors at hand. We're going to introduce all of our scholar athletes now. We're going to ask all of our honorees, please stand as I introduce you, but stay at your table and we're going to try our best to hold our applause to the end. Good luck with that, right? But we'll give it our best effort nonetheless. We start with Nolan Byers of Archbishop Hannon High School. His head coach is Steve Soper, an offensive lineman. His grade point average, 4.39. ACT score 32. Member of the National Honor Society, Principal's Honorable Every Year, a three-year letterman, two-year team captain, All-State, All-Parish, three-time All-District, letterman in powerlifting, and he's a Hannon Student of the Year, student of Masters, member of the homecoming court, and play football at the United States Air Force Academy. From Archbishop Hannon High School to not be with us today because he's got a school obligation, but his parents are here, so I'd ask them to please take a bow. Congratulations to Nolan Myers of Archbishop Hannon. Darius Davis, Archbishop Rummel High School. Head coach, Nick Monica, to safety. Great point average of 3.9. Member of the National Honor Society. Three-year letterman, two-year team captain, two-time player of the week. Brendan Wallace Quarterback Club, Scholar Athlete of the Week, WGNO Scholar Athlete of the Week. Leading tackler as a junior. Injured his knee, missed most of the season, but came back and played in the playoffs with a big brace on his knee and played really well, too. Member of Big Brothers, scholarship, to Stanford University, from Archbishop Rummel, Darius Davis. 
Chancellor from Archbishop Rommel, Nana Lusto, a 4.60 GPA at ACT of 29, is that coach is Nick Monica, Academic Achievements, National English Honor Society, President's Education Award, three-year letterman, two-year team captain, member of the Chess Club, student newspaper editor, member of Big Brothers, he will attend Loyola University, go Wolfpack. From Archbishop Rommel, Nathan Lusto. From Archbishop Shaw, Raymond Howard. His coach is Hank Tierney, an offensive lineman with a GPA of 4.05. Member of Mu Alpha Theta, National Honor Society, Spanish National Honor Society. Outstanding academic performance in theology, earth science, English, language, arts. He's a four-year letterman and a starter team captain, but under three years of wrestling, and by the way, made the finals twice I covered that event every year. I wish you had another year of eligibility, maybe next time, right? But you did a fantastic job. Giving Hope Food Bank volunteer student government, he will play football at the United States Air Force Academy. From Archbishop Shaw, Raymond Howard. From Ben Franklin High School, Thomas Gross III. His head coach, Terry Wilson. Plays receiver and quarterback, GPA of 3.6, ACT score 28. National Honor Society, multiple academic scholarships, three-year letterman, two-time team captain, team MVP, scholar award, courage award, leadership award, lettered in trap, qualifying for the indoor meet. Service projects are National Honor Society, Black Culture Club, Gaming Club as well. Undecided on a college choice as of yet from Ben Franklin, Thomas Gross III. From Bonneville Magnet School, Julian Price, his head coach, B.J. Cohen, his wide receiver defensive back, a GPA of 3.6, honor roll all four years, member of the men's leadership group, also a four-year letterman, team captain, two-team all-district, two-time offensive player of the year, lettered in track and field, member of the New Hope Community Outreach Youth Program, will play football in Memphis, could not be with us today, but please give a warm round of applause for Julian Price. Bob Green Palmar, Brother Martin High School. GPA of 4.42, ACT score 29, principal's honor roll 4.0 or above for five years, five-year letterman, team captain, football team award, named offensive lineman of the week multiple times, his coach is an offensive line guy, so he's happy, also lettered in track and field and in powerlifting. He's a church volunteer, he will attend Tulane University. From Brother Martin High School, Bob Creek Parmar. <laughs> From Chalmette High School, Ethan Kuvion. His head coach is Jason Tucker, quarterback for the Owls, 3.61 GPA, honor roll student, three-year letterman, team captain, all-district, two-time team most valuable player, a district champion, a three-time Manning Futures recipient, led Shaw Method for just a second 10-wing season in school history, and set school and season records for passing yards and touchdowns. Started his own grass cutting business. I'm looking for something. He will attend LSU from Shaw High School, Ethan Kuvion. From Gillisau High School, Timothy Maxson. His head coach is Graham Jarrett. Defensive lineman, his GPA 3.35, four years on the honor roll. He's a four-year letterman, three-year starter, team captain, two-time all-district performer, all-state as well. And Leonard in track and field, district champion, both the shot put and the distance. Throw it, baby. Big Brothers, church youth group, and will play football at Southeast Missouri State. From Gillisau High School, Timothy Maxson. Fisher High School, Evan Phillips, head coach Devin Kagans, he's a 3.53 GPA, honor roll and principals list all four years, four-year letterman, four-year starter, two-year team captain, two-time all-district, a four-year letterman in baseball and in basketball as well, that's the high school experience. Internship for Carpenter and Patterson, Special Olympics volunteer, and an accomplished singer, maybe we'll get him up here, he's undecided on a college choice as of yet, a Fisher Gator. Evan Phillips. <laughs> From George Washington Carver High School, Tory Pinkney Jr. Head coach Luis Figueroa, is a wide receiver. GPA of 4.25 and ACT score of 27. Four years of high honors, top five in class, three times student of the year. Four year letterman, star, team captain, team most valuable player, led the team in receiving twice, and also lettered in track and field for four years. Peer tutoring president, student council, student body hiring committee. Undecided on a college choice from Harvard High School, Iran, Tory Pinker Jr. <laughs> from Cross, Cross Johnson, 
Cross of Cross. Is that Coach? Stop winding. GPA 3.78 for this outstanding wide receiver and honorable student. Three year veteran, all district, all metro, all state honorable mention, Clarion Herald Elite Team, Perseverance Award after returning from injury as well. Also, Leonard in track and field. He's a member of the Team Leadership Council, and he will play football at the University of Arkansas. So he did. From Holy Cross, Cross Council. From Isidore Newman School, it is Peter Loop, wide receiver, head coach, Nelson Stewart. GPA 3.8, ACT score 31. Newman Scholar, first honor roll student. Four-year letter, two-time all-district performer, all-metro, and he led the team with 39 receptions for 790 yards and 12 touchdowns in his senior season. And he averaged a school record 27.3 yards per catch. Hello. Also learned in baseball and served as a team captain. He's a co-founder of Be the Change Nola Club and a volunteer tree planter as well. He will attend Southern Methodist University from his Lord Newman School, Peter Lou. Jesuit High School, Tucker Schubert. His head coach is Ryan Manella. He's a linebacker. His GPA is 4.57. His ACT, a perfect 36. <laughs> I'll stop there, right? National Honor Society, National Merit Semi Finalist, New Orleans Quarterback Club Scholar Athlete, Friday Night Football Scholar Athlete from WGNO, first honor roll every semester. Three year letterman, team captain. Team Leadership Committee led the team in tackles, three-time player of the game, and he helped the Blue Jays to a safe runner-up finish in 2021. And our game that I was blessed to broadcast, the counselor at Camp Smile, Responsibility House Volunteer, Food Pantry Volunteer, Vacation Bible School, Youth Camps Volunteer, Hams for Fans, Big Brother Program, and he's choosing between MIT, John Hopkins, and Princeton. From <laughs> Jesuit High School, Tucker Shipman. Curtis Christian School, Dagan Bruno. He's a quarterback. He does a lot of things. His head coach is JT Curtis. His GPA is 4.0. His ATT score is 26. His academic achievements, National Honor Society, Honor Scholar, George Eastman Young Leaders Award, Academic All-State, English 3 and Spanish 1 Departmental Awards. He's a four-year letterman, a two-year team captain, all-district, all-metro MVP, all-state, state champion, MVP in the state championship game. Oh, by the way, he's also a four-year letterman in basketball and baseball, and he has a free moment every day to take a deep breath. I thank you. <laughs> Member of the Key Club, Spirit Club, baseball, football, summer camps counselor. It's a pleasure covering him, and he'll play football for Tulane University in the fall. From John Curtis, Megan Burnham. From Kenny Discovery, Lance Rumbelo. Lance is a wide receiver, played for Coach P.J. Strong. His GPA 3.7, his ACT score 27. Honors Curriculum, Tulane Scholarship Award recipient, member of the National Honor Society. He's a four-year letter, a first-team all-district performer, a Swamp Ball Award as team MVP, they're the Swamp Balls, selected to play in the Gridiron Football All-Star Game, selected to play in the Louisiana versus Arkansas Battle of the Border Game. Letterman in soccer and track, and are an all district in both of those sports as well. Staying busy and doing the job. Vacation Bible School volunteer and youth sports camp volunteer. He'll play football at Calumet College of St. Joseph in Indiana. From Kenner Discovery, Lance Rumble. <laughs> From the count of 35, Ty Brown, defensive back, GPA 4.3 and an ACT score of 26. Member of the honor roll for four years, National Honor Society. A perfect grade point average. A three-year letterman and starter, and a two-year team captain, two-time all-district performer, all-state, letterman in basketball and track, member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and he will play football at Dartmouth College. Couldn't attend today, but his head coach, our good friend Frank Daggs, is here. And from McDonough 35 School, Ty Brown. <laughs> also from McDonough 35, Peyton McFarland. Defensive end. GPA of 3.3, coached by Frank Daggs, honor roll student all four years, National Honor Society, three-year letterman, two-year team captain, three-time all-district performer, three-time all-state performer, and lettered in track and powerlifting. He will play football at Grambling. Couldn't be with us today, but Frank is here to smile and eat and enjoy it and to talk to me. Again, Peyton McFarland of McDonough 35. From North Lake Christian School, Benjamin Harrison. 
Linebacker fullback, GPA of 4.43 and ACT score of 30. Coached by James Willis, National Honor Society, straight A honor rule all four years, AP scholar, Patriots Penn SA winner, WWL A plus scholar athlete, a four year letterman, three year team captain, two time all district performer, district defense and most valuable player, North Shore All Area team, veteran and powerlifting state champ in the 198 pound class for Division IV. Member of the Student Leadership Council, a student ambassador, Crane's band guitarist, STEM team, Eagle Scout, student tutor, and Christian Leadership Award. He will attend South Alabama from North Lake Christian, Benjamin Harris. <laughs> also from North Lake Christian, Gavin Crone. Gavin, coached by James Wilson, a linebacker with a GPA of 3.87 and ACT score of 26. AB Honor Roll, Wolverine Scholar Club, four year letterman, team captain. Cheat time all district, Leonard in track, baseball, and powerlifting. There you go again. I love it. Qualified for state championship in the discus and competed at the state powerlifting meet as well. He's a member of the Leadership Council, Student Events Leadership Committee lead, Canton North Lake Counselor, School Ambassador, Sports Analytic Club. He'll play football at Southern Nazarene University. From North Lake Christian, Gavin Crone. <laughs> and from North Lake Christian, Chase Mizell. Wide receiver safety with a GPA of 3.96, coached by James Willis, and all a honor roll all four years, literary rally, ACSI distinguished Christian high school student and a member of the National Honor Society. Four-year letterman, two-year team captain, all-district, all-state team MVP, started in soccer, all-district there too, and is a member of the STEM club, race team, student tutor, vacation Bible school, and a youth soccer coach to boot. He'll play soccer at Spring Hill College in Mobile. Chase Mizell, North Lake Christian School. <laughs> From Patrick Taylor, Science and Technology Academy, Ethan Trapp. His head coach, Kenny Bourgeois. The quarterback, 4.3 GPA, ACT of 26, member of the Principal's Honor Roll, National Honor Society, a four year letterman, four year team captain, two time all district, all metro, lettered six years in basketball, four years in track and field, two time all district in basketball, and Patrick Taylor's Male Athlete of the Year. Member Big Brothers and a student council president to boot. Like he had time to do it, he did. He will attend Millsaps College, not too far away in Mississippi, from Patrick Taylor, Ethan Trout. <laughs> from Pearl River High School, Trey Turnage. His head coach, Eric Collins, defensive back, quarterback, GPA of 4.0, honorable student all four years, a five year letterman, two year team captain, all district and a three-time winner of the Defensive Coaches Award. Also lettered in baseball, soccer, and basketball. Five and one as a pitcher as well. As a junior, member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, he'll play baseball. For Joe Sherman at Delgado. Couldn't be with us today, but please give a round of applause for Trey Turner, your pro <laughs> Right, Pope John Paul II, Joseph Whitehouse. He's a kicker and punter, 4.51 GPA. ACT score 29. Coached by Philip Piggott, member of the National Honor Society, principal's honor roll every quarter. Spencer Co. Engineering Scholarship is a five year letterman, team captain, two time all district performer, all state, veteran in soccer for five years, served as a team captain, and helped the team to four district titles in the 2021 state championship. Member of the liturgy team, the Catholic Athletes for Christ, CAC Spiritual Choir, Student Council, School Ambassador, Keep Slidell, beautiful volunteer, Cup Scout. Hope John Paul football and soccer camps as well. He'll attend Villanova from Hope John Paul II, Joseph Whitehouse. <laughs> from St. Martin's Episcopal, Ilio Mejeron. Kevin Dyser is his head coach. He's an offensive and defensive lineman. 3.85 GPA and an ACT score of 25. A member of the National Honor Society, senior class president, four year letterman, team captain. Two-time All-District Performer, Team Co-Defensive MVP, Leonard and Track and Field, State Champion and the Javelin as a junior. As a campus volunteer, undecided on a college choice from St. Martin's Episcopal, Ilio Mejoran. <laughs> also from St. Martin's Episcopal, Dominic Hogan. Coached by Kevin Dyser, he's a linebacker with a 3.87 GPA. Honorable every semester of high school. Four-year letterman. Team captain, two-time all-district performer, two-time team defensive most valuable player. As a church volunteer, he will attend LSU from St. Martin's Episcopal, Dominic Hogan. <laughs> from St. Paul's School, Austin South. 
Defensive end, coached by Kenny Sears. GPA of 4.2, an ACT score of 27. Member of the Gold Honor Award, Principal's Academic Award, Community Service Award, Golden Torch Award for academic excellence and meaningful extracurricular impact. Member of the National Honor Society and Blue Alpha Theta. Four-year letterman, all-district, district champion, academic, all-state. Member of the Miracle League, Special Olympics Volunteer Camp Counselor, a LaSallian Youth Leaders and Eucharistic Minister. He will attend LSU from St. Paul's, Austin South. <laughs> from Stalman High School, Damon Narcisse. He's a receiver and linebacker, grade point average, 4.2, ACT score 27. Coached by Eric Shooter, 2023-2024 Salmon Student of the Year, honor roll all four years, a four-year letterman, team captain, two-time all-district player offensively and defensively, all-parish, all-state, district defensive most valuable player, team MVP, Ironman Award, and a member of the Team Leadership Council. Elementary school reading program activities as well. He'll play football at Georgetown University. From Salmon, Damon Narcy. From Slidell High School, Joshua Hagan. He's coached by Damon Page. He's an offensive lineman with a GPA of 4.0, an ACT score of 26. And he's a member of the Honor Roll all four years, member of the Beta Club, Student of the Year nominee, Academic All-State Honoree, a three-year letterman, team captain, all-district, district champion in 2022, Patrick O'Malley Adversity and Perseverance Award. He's a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Tiger Teammates, a Special Olympics volunteer, and a church volunteer. He will attend Southeastern Louisiana University. From Slidell, Joshua Hagan. <laughs> From Sophie B. Wright Charter, Dallas Hughes. Defensive back, running back, plays for Ken Dorsey, a GPA of 4.0. Honor rolled every semester, president of the National Honor Society, WWL A Plus Athlete Award, ranks number two in his class. A four year letterman, two year team captain, two time all district, all metro performer, lettered in track was a regional champion of the 400 meter dash and a track team captain. Yeah. School drum major as well, debate team, volunteers with Father's House Kids Organization and the Women's Shelter Toy Drive. Stay is busy. He'll play football at Louisiana Tech University. From Sophie B. Wright, Dallas Hughes. <laughs> also from Sophie B. Wright, Osiris Scott. GPA of 3.3, wide receiver, coached by Ken Dorsey. Honor roll every semester, National Honor Society member, four-year letterman, two-year team captain, two-time all-district first team performer, also lettered in track and in baseball. He's a member of NORD and Feed the Homeless with his extracurricular activities, and he's undecided on a college choice. From Sophie B. Wright, Osiris Scott. <laughs> Last but not least, from Thomas Jefferson Academy, Quinn Eden. He's a tight end defensive end, coached by Kenny Bush, and his GPA is 4.77, his ACT score is 28. Top 10 class rank, National Honor Society, and honor roll member as well. Four-year lineman, two-year team captain, two-team all-district member, best defensive lineman award, veteran in baseball for four years, West Bank Quarterback Club, outstanding athlete award. He has a part-time job, and he's also a Special Olympics volunteer, and we'll find some work for him today. He will attend LSU. From Thomas Jefferson Academy, Quinn Eden. Those are our 32 honorees. Let's give them one more collective round of applause. Thank you, Ken. Fantastic job as always. You know, Tucker, Ken and I did not have the opportunities that you have. For us, it was either Loyola or Last Chance U. And, and the Jesuits felt sorry for us, and they took us in. So I know Ken and I appreciate that. So we are not done because we have some very, very special awards to give out. And before we do that, let's again thank the Allstate Sugar Bowl for being so good to us this week and every week here in New Orleans. They have been absolutely outstanding. Now, to present some additional awards, let's bring back up to the stage Mr. Walter Becker. Thank you, Ed, and I also want to thank Ken for that outstanding 
uh, presentation in recognition of today's honorees. Very well done. I'm sure this means, it means a lot to these student athletes and to their families. <coughs> We're all really proud of all of them. And I'd also just like to go out and thank all of you fine young men who just stood up for your efforts in the community, in the classroom, and on the football field. Thank you. I'd also like to congratulate Ron Bricado and Bill Hancock on their much-deserved honors. Well, now, I mentioned a little bit earlier that the Sugar Bowl is very proud to have partnered with the college football playoff to provide millions of dollars of support to our area teachers. But at this time, I'd like to point out something else. I'd like to point out that one of the key reasons for our support of teachers is Mr. Bill Hancock. Bill played a very critical role in determining that the college football playoffs charitable arm would focus on teachers through its Extra Yard for Teachers initiative. Bill may be just a little bit biased because of his, because of his wonderful wife, Nikki, who spent 30 years as an English teacher. But both, we can understand that. But you know what? His decision made sense. Is there any profession in this country more important yet more underappreciated than our teachers? Great call on that, Bill. Thank you very much. So now we have before us 32 outstanding and talented athletes for this year's All-State Sugar Bowl scholarships. And I'll have to tell you, it was quite a challenge for us to narrow this, day, narrow this list down to five people, five men, who will be presented with these scholarships. And so I'd like to thank my fellow Sugar Bowl committee members for the time, effort, and consideration that they devoted to selecting our honorees today. But before I get to this year's scholarship winners, let, allow me to direct your attention once again to TV screens one more time to see what these scholarships, as well as others presented by the Sugar Bowl, have meant to some of the past recipients. Obviously just a huge honor to receive this scholarship and then it just gave me an opportunity to be able to manage money from a young age and really put me and my family in a good position going forward. With the help of Allstate Sugar Bowls, I was able to attend college without the stress my freshman year. It definitely helped my parents and I financially get me settled. There's a lot of small fees and stuff whenever you get to college that you don't really get to see until you get there and the Allstate Sugar Bowl check pretty much has given me and my family a lot of comfortability as far as uh, financial concerns. The National Football Foundation Scholarship was extremely pivotal for me in offsetting some of the costs of my undergraduate uh, degree. It meant that my medical degree loans were not then on top of already existing college loans. My mom is in the Allstate Sugar Bowl Hall of Fame. So to receive, you know, the scholarship and the support from them was just really special and like a full circle moment. And I remember the day I got the call from my coach letting me know that I received the award and the first emotion I had was just honor. I was grateful, blessed. I was happy to be nominated uh, for the All-State Sugar Bowl Scholarship. And when I got it, it allowed me to fulfill my dreams of going to play Division III football. You know, to be acknowledged, by an organization like the Allstate Sugar Bowl, you know, I felt really, really proud of myself. There are so many people in my generation who struggle to feel seen and struggle to be able to feel valued in this community and me being one of them. Um, so Allstate Sugar Bowl, y'all allowed me to self-reflect and realize that I was in a good space. I'm hoping to, you know, continue my academic journey here at Tulane, get my degree, uh, hopefully, um, keep pursuing football and, and uh, maintaining, you know, student athlete lifestyle as long as I can. My postgraduate plans are just to stay connected to the game of soccer. I obviously want to become an engineer one day, whether that's before or after I play my professional career, but right now I want to keep doing both while I can. I'm extremely proud to be a recipient of the National Football Foundation and Sugar Bowl Scholarship, and also extremely proud that this tradition lives on to now. So congratulations to the Sugar Bowl on 90 years. Um, while all 32 of our All-State Sugar Bowl Scholar athletes represent a high level of achievement, it's our distinct honor to recognize five student athletes with scholarships based on their accomplishments and the essays that they submitted to us. 
The first four that I'm going to introduce will receive $10,000 scholarships. And our final honoree has been chosen for the Oliver Dellery $20,000 scholarship, sponsorship. So after I introduce you each winner, I ask each of you all to come up to the front so we can present your check to you and get a picture with you. All right. Our first scholarship winner wrote to us about striving to excel in everything that he does. He learned about high achievement at a young age after watching his older brothers, and his first taste, first taste of success only made him want more. He was a two-time All-District selection and a two-year team captain in football, and he also lettered in track and baseball. He ranks in the top ten in his class and is a member of the National Honor Society. He plans to use his scholarship to get started on an undergraduate degree, and he has further plans to attend medical school. From Thomas Jefferson Academy, Quinn Eaton. Our next winner focused his essay on a lesson he learned from his hardworking parents. You must have unwavering focus and a, and a determination to overcome obstacles and distractions to finish the job, even when it might seem impossible. He has shown that focus and determination in all aspects of his life. He earned straight A's in every semester of high school. He was a three-time football team captain and a two-time all-district selection. Just a couple of weeks ago, he won a state championship in powerlifting. From North Lake Christian School, Benjamin Harrison. Our third scholarship, scholarship recipient is a young man who has truly embraced the concept of being a student athlete. In his essay, he showed, he showed us the spirit of a person who wants to go to college and is doing everything it takes to get there. He was a four-year letterman and an all-district selection in football, a district champion in track, the drum major for the school marching band, a member of the debate team, president of the Honor Society, and he's on track to graduate number two in his class. He will be the first male in his family to earn his high school diploma. From Sophie P. Wright, Dallas Hughes. scholarship winner wrote a moving essay to us about his adoptive father who did everything possible to help him reach tremendous levels of success in the classroom, in sports, and as a person. From his father, this young man learned about the sacrifices he needed to make and about leadership. He was a star in football, basketball, and baseball while maintaining a 4.0 grade point average. He's been a state champion and he's been an honor scholar and he's been recognized by his teammates in all sports as a true team leader. From John Curtis Christian School, Dagan Bruno. <laughs> now before I introduce our final scholarship recipient, I want to say a few words about one of my fellow Sugar Bowl committee members at this time. Oliver Delery was a longtime member of the Sugar Bowl committee. He was the youngest president of our organization back in 1996, and he remained very active in a wide range of committees, including helping keep the Sugar Bowl at the top of the college football world. Oliver passed away five years ago, and in his memory, we now present the Oliver Delery Scholarship on an annual basis. I'd like to thank his wife Susie, his son Oliver III, and his daughter Charlotte for continuing to support the Sugar Bowl organization. In fact, his son Oliver, who we call O, is in fact a valued associate member of the Sugar Bowl today with us. The fourth annual winner of the Oliver Delery Scholarship wrote about the multitude of challenges and obstacles that he faced during his life. He wrote about feeling lost and without hope. But like a good football man, 
he referenced Vince Lombardi. Lombardi said, it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up. This young man did get back up, and he's been successful in football, in the classroom, and in the community. He has followed the work ethic of his mother and his grandmother, who made such a positive impact on his life, and he's now focused on college and a medical degree. Ladies and gentlemen, from Archbishop Romo, Nathan Lusto. Once again, congratulations to all of the honorees that you've heard about today, and they're here today. We, you represent a bright future for our city and our state, and we look forward to following your successes for many years to come. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here, and thank you to the All-State Sugar Bowl for their incredible generosity to this community. So always support them, because remember, they support us. All of our honorees and scholar athletes, if you don't mind, uh, we're going to huddle. Where, where we want them, John? Just the scholarship winners. The scholarship winners. Okay, the sc scholarship winners right in front. We're going to take a few pictures. And congratulations to our scholarship winners and all our scholar athletes for, for everything you've accomplished and all the great days ahead. Because the greatest days truly are ahead. We absolutely believe that. Congratulations again. Thank you.